All right, so most of the bonds that I'm going to be talking about in this class are all what we call simple bonds. They do not have these embedded options. So we're going to talk about these embedded options and we're just going to understand that they are going to impact the value of a bond, uh, but they can create a lot of complications when we go into to, to their true valuation. Okay, now there are a number of, of contract features when you look at, but one of those things we're going to we're start with is that whenever we issue a bond, is that we basically have an indenture agreement. Okay, and this indenture is essentially is a formal agreement between the bond issuer, the company, or the government, and the bondholders of this issue. Okay, and so in this indenture, it specifies all of the contract features of it. Right, it, it says when payments are going to be made. It's going to also have possibly a call provision, put provision, and sinking fund. Those types of things. Okay, so. When we do this is that it's really important that we assign a trustee because what this trustee is going to do is that this trustee is going to be looking out for the bond holders and making sure that the company is abiding by the agreement of the bond itself. Okay. Now, there's a couple of those things that we have underneath and these are we're talking about the embedded options and these, some of these features of this indenture and one of them is restrictive covenants. Okay. And what a restrictive covenant is, is it basically says that the company cannot do certain things, right? Because what we want to make sure we do is that if we are, are loaning money to a company, we want to make sure that they are not taking outsized risks. Okay, so we might say you cannot exceed a certain debt to assets ratio. We might say that you have to do certain things with these funds, etc. Okay, and basically what it says is if you violate these covenants, is that it will trigger a repayment. The company will have to repay the bond the bondholders or they will have to start paying a higher rate okay an example of this is is if you in your credit card statement is that if you make a late payment if you're more than 30 days late is it will trigger a penalty apr right and you'll and your interest rate will get increased dramatically that is an example of a restrictive covenant right they don't want you to do certain things if you if you violate them and then it will it will trigger this other action okay now, two of the more important things that we're looking at here, two of the more important embedded options, are one of which is going to be a call provision. Okay, now a call provision is one in which um, it, it varies from a put provision. Okay, and a call provision is one in which we have the bond issuer, is that the issuer can call or redeem the bonds early. Uh, and basically what this means is that it's essentially a early repayment option is that basically if interest rates fall, right, it's basically we can refinance. That's kind of what we're doing with a call provision. It means that if I can issue new bonds at a lower rate, I will do that and then I will pay off my earlier bond action. Okay. Now if there's this call provision in there, this is not something that the investor wants because when interest rates fall, okay, because the interest rates fall is that the, it, their their bond is going to get paid off, right? And so they're not going to be getting their future payments, okay? Um, this varies from a put provision where a put provision is it's where the bondholder puts the bonds back into the issuer's hands. So essentially it's saying, give me my money back, okay? It's saying, you can have your bonds back. I need my cash back, okay? Um, this is one of the things you don't see these on most consumer loans, right? We're not going to see a mortgage where it's like, hey, I have a hundred thousand dollar mortgage, and hey, I need that hundred thousand dollars back. Your bank's not going to do that, so we don't have put provisions on mortgages. But we see them on bonds, and what the the impact is is that if we have interest rates that end up rising, is that the investor, the bondholder, is going to want their cash back so they can go invest it in something else, so they can get a higher rate of return. Okay, one way that I have re re remembered these is that we can think about about this as uh, your mother standing on the front porch or your grandmother standing on the front porch ringing the bell and saying, come on in, come on in. They are calling you, right? Is that the grandmother's on the porch and they are calling you into the house. They are calling the bonds back, right? They're saying, hey, bonds, come on back, okay? Now, the other case would be a put, right? Is that we have the... 
And then the other way you might think about this, so you have grandma that's calling them all in, right? That's the call provision, is you might think about it as being a parent, right? A parent is putting their kids into the, the house, right? In the grandma's house. So the parent is take, picking their kids up and putting them back in the house and taking their money, right? Is that you have the issuer, right, is is stuck with with the kids, right? Is stuck with the bonds and they get the, the early repayment, okay? So that's the basic way that, that I remember them, okay? Now, there's a couple other provisions that we can have here, um, but these two are the, the two most important because these can really influence value. They're gonna be set into the indenture according to a certain schedule, saying that you can only call them at specified times. If you do call them early or you put them early, it's gonna be at this price. Uh, those are the things that are gonna be in there. And then we have the investors and the issuers that are going to be making the decision about when they want to do them. Okay, the, there are a number of extensions and the valuation is a little bit more difficult, but we'll be getting into the bond valuation here shortly. There's a couple other things that we think are really important. One of them is gonna be what we call a sinking fund, okay? When we look at most bonds, most bonds are what we call coupon bonds, okay? Which essentially is an interest-only loan, is that you're only paying the interest back on the loan. Now, one of the things that should be done here is that if a company is basically has a bond issue and they're only paying interest, what they should be doing is they should be putting some of this cash aside so that they have, say, $100 million at maturity in, you know, in 10 years when it's due. They can take their $100 million out and they can pay off the rest of the principal, right? They can pay off that big balloon payment at the end. What a big issue would be is that if I think about me personally, right? Let's say I take out a mortgage on my house, right? I take out a mortgage on my house. I'm paying an interest-only loan. So the principal on my mortgage is not coming down, right? Let's say I borrow $100,000. I just pay off the interest every month. The principal stays at $100,000. And let's say in 10 years, they're calling for the entire principal, right? Is that I have to pay out $100,000? Do you think I'm going to have that just sitting around? Probably not, right? So what we end up doing on our mortgages is that every single month we pay down part of our principal, right? We pay down the amount that we owe. So what this sinking fund does it is it establishes guidelines and it's uh, guidelines and a schedule that says at these certain intervals you have you the company the issuer has to put funds back in. You have to retire some of these bonds. You have to give me as an investor a certain amount. Right, and what this does is it ends up lowering the risk of default on those bonds, okay? And what a convertible feature is, is it's a very nice feature for investors and it's also nice for issuers, bond issuers, because they are able to sell these bonds much easier. Now what it does is that it, it, it allows a bondholder to convert, right? It says it right here, it says it's a convertible feature, convert they are able to convert their bonds into stock, okay? Basically, at a, in a pre-established rate, right, if I loan funds to a company that might have high growth prospects, but I wanna make sure I get paid back first, is that I can borrow the funds and then I can convert it into equity later, okay? And so that's a, a really nice feature for investors. Once again, these make them more, more difficult to value. Uh, because most of the bonds we look at have established periods of time when payments are going to be due. Um, but on these is that you can have this convertible option, which is phenomenal if the company just explodes, right? Because if the company increases in value by 100 times and you're getting 5% interest on it, you're only going to get paid 5%. Whereas if you can convert it, you will be able to share in that gain of that 100 time valuation. Okay. So what we just detailed here was just some of the other provisions that we might have. They're also called embedded options in a bond pricing format, okay? These other things add a lot more complexity to how we actually come about the bond valuation. Um, and they, 